my YouTube friends. Uh-oh. That's better. I must have just got up on the wrong side of the bed. I did a video a while back on how to do a 24-7 live stream. And I found out a lot more people are interested in this than I expected. Now, the biggest issue was that people don't want to have to leave their own machine up and tie up their own network connection for 24 hours a day to run the stream. People also weren't crazy about the idea of renting remote server space to run the stream either, and I understand that. If you've never done it, it seems like a pretty complicated process. Luckily, I've managed to find an amazing solution. A platform purpose-built to live stream 24 hours a day to any platform with an unreal set of features on top of it. I can't wait to show it to you today so you know what. Let's get to it! Upstream is the name of the platform that I want to show you today. It's a browser-based software specifically designed for 24-hour live streams. There are links down below in the description for you to check it out yourself, but of course, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to be up and running in just a few minutes. It's really that easy. Let's jump right in. So here we are in the dashboard. Of course, it looks really, really simple because it is. So we're going to create a new 24-7 stream and you just pick the service that you want to go to. So there's a lot already here. And if the one you want isn't here, you can always go to other custom RTMP. I'm just going to go ahead and go to YouTube in this case. And we're going to connect with the recommended automated stream. But if we chose manual, you could see that it wants a stream name and you just need your source URL and your stream key. And that's really all you need. So you can easily set this up without even having to really log into YouTube if that's what you decided. I'm just going to go ahead and connect with it directly. And there we go and continue and so here we are now we could just name our stream so let's go with 24-7 healthline sure why not we want it 1920 by 1080 although you will notice that uh, you could also do 720 if you like and then you click your status do we want it unlisted private public however you want it listed in my case i'm going to go with unlisted but you're probably going to go public with it then you just put your thumbnail here and you can just grab it download it whatever you want the usual thumbnail stuff then you put your stream description in here and basically you're setting this up just like you would on youtube and put as many tags as you need to to describe what your broadcast is so keep putting them in there till you get to uh, all the ones that you need then we're going to continue with youtube and we're going to go ahead and select the account we want to stream to click continue and continue and this is to give it the opportunity to manage your ads and your ad stuff so that's why we're doing that so here we can make choices. Do we want to do a bunch of images for it with music in the background or a 24 seven video background? So create a 24 seven stream with multiple video backgrounds and music. And we're going to use video. And now all we really have to do is start to build our stream. So the next thing we have to do is upload our videos and we can go into manage videos and see that we don't actually have any. So what we're going to do is go ahead and drag some videos on here. We'll manage videos and we'll go to upload file and all we have to do is drop files right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of these files and these are just a bunch of my most recent videos and as you know my videos are always released in 4k so I downsized all these in order to be live streamable and so now they're 1920 by 1080 we're just going to toss it in here and of course now we have to wait for them all to upload once your uploads are complete you're going to see your loop duration in the top here you can see mine's about four and a half hours and everything here shows up numbered on the side you can readjust the order in any way you want by grabbing grabbing right here you can also click here and you know put whatever number you want in there and it will move you've got options over here to preview the video you can add a YouTube ad slot so what this will do is add ad spots in between videos for whatever duration you set in here so when you do this it should trigger an ad to run in between the video so we can just add the slot here and you can see it puts a little icon here we can go into options and we can edit the ad slot and remove it if we want you can rename the videos you could duplicate it so if you just want to make the list longer you can do that just by duplicating videos you can download the video 
video again, send it to the top, the bottom, or remove it from the queue altogether. And of course you can do that on any video. Over here on the right, we've got what we selected at the beginning. We wanted a video background and we want an ordered loop. In other words, it's gonna play in the order right here, but we can click shuffled loop and then we'll just shuffle these up, play them in whatever order. We've got the same thing with audio in your playlist. You can choose a song playlist or go to a radio stream and then you've got the order of the loop or shuffled for the audio as well. You've got audio playlist settings down here and then you got your video channel volume. And right here you could control how videos go from one to the next. In this case we have no fade, but we can put random, fade out, slide horizontally, scale out, swipe away. So there are a couple of different transitions from when it changes from one video to the next. Now we can schedule our live stream right here and we can schedule the beginning and the end. So if we were to do that, now we can just select the date and time that we want our stream to start. And then we could go and select the date and time our stream ends and set a custom stream duration, you know, just under 12 hours. Because YouTube automatically archives live streams that are less than 12 hours. Or you could just set the time of the total video duration. You can repeat the schedule every day if you like. So they make it really easy to set all of this stuff up over here. And then right here you have your cue point setting. And again, your cue points are where the ads are going to run. And you can select whether they're going to be audio cues or video cues right in there. And then you can save your changes. Now up here on the top, we have our video playlist, our audio playlist, which is the same as the video one, just with audio. Then we have a stream designer here. The stream designer is very cool because it allows you to add elements that you may want on every one of your videos. So you've got draw rectangle and you can just draw rectangle in here. It has a whole bunch of settings over here on the side so you can change the color. You can add a stroke. You can change the opacity. You can just delete it right here. You can also use the snap tool and the lock ratio to set everything up. It does the same thing with ovals and circles. The next thing is to embed websites like stream elements or something like that. So if we wanted to add alerts to our 24 seven, we can just stretch this out. Once we have it over here, we can actually go in here and we can fit it to the full screen, 1920 by 1080. And all we have to do is put the website information in here. So if I go over to stream elements, I can go down here and go to my alerts and I can just copy this out, go back in here to the stream builder and just paste that link in there. And then boom, you can see that the overlay disappeared. And now I'm going to turn the audio off. But what we can do is emulate this. So if we want a subscriber event and you'll see, there it goes. We've got a subscriber event that will appear on this live stream just like it would for any other live stream. So that's pretty cool. Now over here you're going to notice that this is the information tab for any one of the things we add. We've also got a layer tab so we'll be able to choose between layers. Layers are things that are added over here. Um, we can also add animations so cuts and fades and all that sort of stuff. And then down here we can talk about stock components like whether we're going to use Spotify or Apple Music or just a stream with upstream. Pretty simple stuff. We can add text elements. So we just go over here, stretch out our text element and we can double click it and type whatever we want. There are practically unlimited text settings. You can basically set up text to do just about anything you want with just about any font you can think of and any text effect that you could ever imagine. Any of the elements that you put over here, you could delete just by clicking the delete button. And there we go, it's gone. We can add an image from our image library if we have any images in there. We can just select that, drag over here, creates an image box and we can upload from the library. So what I'm gonna do is just drop an image in here. And this one here would be a good image to drop in there, so there we go. And what it does is just load that image up, it takes a couple seconds. This is really good for, in my opinion, to add a watermark to your video, so something like that. And now you can see why maybe a little bit of a background is important. That could make it somewhat more readable if you wanted to. You can actually add a video to your library and it's just going to go into your video library. You can select any one of the videos and use the selected video and it will add that. And this kind of thing might be cool for a background, especially if you're going to do like a music scene. You can load a video that's like an ambient background 
put it in the back, and then you can use images to scroll across or whatever you want. Now, I like this current display audio track or current display video track. These work the same. So what we're going to do is click on that, and we'll just drag this out like this, and boom. It's going to have your current video name with a little thumbnail that represents it. You know, the folks that are watching your video know which video is playing currently. You can also do a little bit of a waveform, and I think this is mostly for folks that are doing uh, audio streams. You can just drag it like this, and it adds an audio waveform, and there we go. You could even add your chat overlay in here if you wanted to using Social Stream Ninja, and it will give one of these 24-7 streams a truly live feel and an interactive feel for your audience. So you can see how Stream Designer is a really powerful tool. The next thing I want to show you is Preview Stream, and you can preview it on YouTube or in a browser. We're just going to select Preview in a browser. It's going to bring it up, and we can click Start the Preview here. It loads in our elements, and the video will start in a second. So we can see everything up here. We've got our watermark and the volume thingy, and we see our text isn't very readable, so we can easily go in here, go right here, and select that particular element, which is the current video element. We'll go over here, and we can change that text to whatever color we want that might be more readable. There we go. And now if we save our changes, we can go back over here and we can see our text is changed up. Now once you get all of this stuff set up in Stream Designer and over here, you might have more than one stream because, of course, we can set up as many streams as we want and have them all loaded up in here. But when you spend all this time setting up this stream over here, you don't want to have to redo that for every stream. So you can go up here and export your preset. So it downloads the playlist and all of the design settings so that when you load up another stream, you can import that preset and you're ready to go. So all the time that you spend setting this up isn't wasted you're going to be able to use it on every stream that you set up. Now if you set your click here to schedule start and click here to schedule end, maybe you go away and you come back when your stream is ready to go. When it's the appropriate time to start, you just come to my streams, you come over here and you click start. And it's gonna ask you again a little bit of stuff, unlisted or whatever. You click confirm and now it's starting up the stream. And we can see our live stream is going on right now. It's really that easy, and it's just going to keep going. I can chat with the folks in the audience and do whatever I want. Now they just added a really cool feature. If we go into settings and we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see that we can add multi-streaming. So you can add your first multi-stream, and you can go to any platform or even the same platform on a bunch of different channels. It's really up to you. So you could just select Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, Rumble, Kick no matter what you want. And all you need to do is enter your stream name and your stream key and the stream URL, which obviously you'd get the stream key and the stream URL right from Twitch. And you click save settings and you've added a stream. And you can add up to 10 different streams, way more than what you're gonna find anywhere else. Simple multi-streaming has been added, really cool feature. Now pricing wise, you're gonna see that obviously this isn't free. But it's not expensive either, and you can stream pretty much as many streams as you could possibly want to stream. Some of these have different settings and all that sort of stuff. Most of them are 1920 by 1080. But if you did want to stream in 4K, there are ones here for 4K as well. So the pricing structure is about the same as what it would be if you were going to rent your own server and set everything up that way. The difference is you don't have to worry about anything here. The setup is so ridiculously easy. You set it, you click go live, and you forget about it. You're done. It runs on its own. You can turn your computer off and go find something else to do if you want. You don't have to worry about anything. This is the perfect example of when a piece of software is purpose-built to do a specific task. And it does 24-7 live streams very well. And if 24-7 live streams is what you want to do, then the price is well worth it. It will make your life so much easier. In my opinion, if you're trying to do a 24-hour live stream, this is an absolute game changer.
Upstream is so incredibly powerful. Now setting these streams up, I think recording some non-released short intermission videos that you can put in between the regular ones is a really good idea. Something mainly geared towards telling the audience what the channel is about. Maybe your video release schedule and your live streaming schedule and a bit about how they can support the channel. Now I wouldn't make these long, just two minutes max, but it's a great way to break up the stream just a little bit. Now, if there's one thing that I'd like to see added to Upstream, it would be a little bit of chat integration. It would be sweet if when a new video comes on, it would send a video name to the chat with a link to the original video so viewers could go directly to it if they needed to rewatch a part or maybe they just wanted to watch it again. But this is just a tiny thing when so much about Upstream is so good. But that's just what I think. What do you guys think of Upstream and how are you going to use it? Let me know about it down in the comments. And if you're looking for some potentially viral live streaming ideas, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.